Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to go through three science-backed ways that you can use Notion to improve your productivity. For those that are new to the channel, my name's Tom. I make videos about Notion and how you can use it to live a more productive life. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, bang subscribe and you're going to be notified when I release new weekly videos. So first up, we have a really interesting piece of research from Professor Teresa Amabil and Stephen Kramer on something they call the Progress Principle. So in their study, they asked 238 people from 26 different teams to keep an anonymous diary so they could track their experiences on a daily basis. They received more than 12,000 diary entries, which they then used to analyse people's inner work lives. These were their perceptions, emotions and motivational levels that would help explain their performance. What they found is that people who take small steps forward on a project and also celebrate small wins are not only more productive, but also more creative and even have better relationships. Now, this wasn't really interesting for me in terms of taking small steps forward is going to improve your productivity. I think anyone who knows anything about productivity knows that small habits over time compound to really big results. But what I found really interesting about this was the power that even just celebrating the small wins could have on our productivity. Now, as someone who's a type A person and quite self-critical, I find it really hard to celebrate small wins. And Notion, and journaling in particular on Notion, has just been a really really great way for me to, at the end of every day, just say, right, okay, what went well today? What can I celebrate? I have a template that literally forces me every day to write out three things that went well. And I just find getting into the process of this is helping me to be a bit more productive by recognizing what's gone well, and fundamentally as well, just making me a little bit happier. I don't think there's many habits out there that you can implement that you can safely say they're probably gonna improve your just general well-being. But I do think that journaling and celebrating the small wins at the end of every evening is one of them. So if you're looking for a habit to get started with on Notion, I'd highly recommend just setting up a process so at the end of every day, you can celebrate three small wins. Context switching, multitasking, whatever you want to call it, is an absolute killer for productivity. There's so many studies out there showing that moving from one task to another too frequently is a real drain to our energy levels. And let's just take a look at one of those studies. In experiments published in 2001 by Joshua Rubinstein and others, they conducted four experiments in which young adults switched between different tasks. These tasks were things like solving math problems or classifying geometric objects. For all the tasks, the participants lost time when they had to switch from one task to another. What they found with the experiment is that as the tasks got more complex, people lost more time. And as a result, people took significantly longer to switch between the more complex tasks. Maya said that even the brief mental blocks from switching between different tasks can actually make us 40% less productive. My biggest drain from task switching comes when I'm browsing the internet. Now, with my job, I actually often have to Google how to do a certain thing. You know, maybe it's a certain query that I have to run or a certain piece of code that I need to understand. And often I can get drawn into a rabbit hole on the internet when like an interesting article appears next to what I'm reading. And it's really easy for me to trick myself into thinking that I'm being productive by reading that article. And then I'll often get sort of sucked down this rabbit hole hole where I've gone into the uh, internet into some forum to find some answer and then half an hour later I know the answer but I'm still in the forum reading other articles so what I've done is recently started to use the notion web clipper and this has just been an absolute game changer for me combining that with a system to never read articles as they present themselves but to always save them to read for later has just been massive in improving my productivity so what I do at the moment is if I go into an article and I need to access a certain piece of information and then something else catches my eye, I just save that with the web clipper and then I designate an hour at the start and the end of each day to just read through different articles and yeah, it's been an absolute game changer for me. The last tip I have for you is around a theory called brain drain and if that sounds a little bit scary, uh, it kind of is, so let's take a look. So in this study, Adrian F. Ward and a few others investigated the concept of brain drain. And the idea is that having a smartphone on your body reduces your cognitive performance. Basically, that's your ability to put your mind to good use solving problems, being mindful or paying attention to others around you. And in the experiment, 548 undergraduates were divided into groups. 
Groups were then asked to put their smartphones out of sight, such as in a bag or on their desk or in another room, for a two-week period. Participants were then given a number of tests designed to measure cognitive capacity and fluid intelligence, that's memory and problem solving. The results of the experiment can be seen here and basically it shows that there's a 10% drop in both your working memory and your fluid intelligence from having your phone at your desk compared to in another room. I thought the results from this experiment were absolutely mental. I can completely understand how having a phone on your desk while you're doing a test and it beeping and you interacting with it is perhaps going to lower your result on that test. What they're saying here is that even if the phone is like turned off or in your bag, if it's in the same room as you, it's gonna lower your intelligence. And I just think that's crazy. Like, it must mean that our brains have just associated with phones to such an extent that we think about them in terms of like low cognition work so that even when they're around, we're not operating at the best level that we possibly can. Now this proves a bit of a problem to me because I actually really like using my phone when I'm working and especially the Notion app just to capture little ideas as they come. But recently what I've started doing is taking to putting my phone in a completely different room when I'm working and then just using the Notion desktop app to capture everything. So yeah, this is more of a like slightly different productivity tip with Notion. It's about how not to use it rather than how to use it. But probably an interesting thing to try out, just putting your phone in a completely different room, only using Notion on a desktop and seeing if your productivity increases at all. I love taking these insights from scientific articles and then actually making them usable by putting them into productivity systems. So if this type of content is something you'd like to see more of, let me know in the comments. Also, I'm going to leave a playlist here to a load of Notion systems that I've put together that you might want to check out if you're new to Notion or looking to use it a little bit better. Thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of your day.